This is Groove Talk with Froggy Style. Welcome to another episode of Groove Talk, everybody. On this episode, I am joined virtually by Pat Clifton. How's it going, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, I guess just to start this off, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and uh, tell the audience kind of like what you do and uh, what you're doing musically and stuff like that. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. I uh, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm, I'm mysterious. I'll probably give you some pretty uh, pretty weak answers, but I'll do my best to get uh, get something good. So my name is Pat Clifton, man. I'm uh, a local producer, uh, mixing engineer, rapper, singer songwriter. Um, in Calgary, Alberta. I feel like I've been doing it for a million years now. Um, and I try to really just like, I, I try to dabble in everything, man. I try to stay busy and make sure that I have something going at any given point. Cause I think that idle hands can be the devil's play toy, man. You got to make sure to just, just keep it moving, you know? So yeah, I always get weird when I have to talk about myself. Like I get nervous. Like it was just such a weird thing as an artist, I feel like, but like we all shared in common, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can confirm from talking to many many musicians that they find it difficult to talk about themselves most of them <laughs> which is like so weird to me because like it's such a self I, and I I mean this in the best way it's such a self-indulgent profession like you talk about that's you share your experience it's what you do but the fact that you meet another human and you struggle to be like oh, I mean I make music uh, <laughs> it's just it's such a weird kind of play on it you know yeah no for sure I mean like I, I did the same thing when you asked me about my set, like about me before we started this, you know, it was like, <laughs> Oh, what do I say? Okay. I, I'm not used to talking about myself, you know, <laughs> got to just even that playing field, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess, yeah. What, uh, uh, what kind of, I guess for those who don't know, what kind of music do you make and, uh, what have you been up to recently? So you definitely just asked the second hardest question. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm making it easy, I like it. Um, I've always struggled with that question. Like, do I, do I fit into the hip hop category? I love, I love just piano ballads and like big, big choruses. Like Purple Rain is my all time favorite song. In fact, you might see Prince walk in and, and the listeners might hear him purr against the mic. He's, he tends to get close and really involved. But I, uh, I guess I make hip hop alternative um, singer-songwriter stuff. I've really just been dabbling in everything. I fell into the hip-hop st uh, the hip hop style early because I'm not going to lie, in a true-to-hip-hop fashion, I feel like I'm damn good at it. <laughs> we got to be a little braggadocio, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the singer-songwriter piece really, like, humbles me, so it really, it, it's a beautiful kind of, like, world to try and step into every so often. So you can catch me on e any one of those lanes on any given day. Sometimes on Tuesday, I'll play a sad piano ballad because Tuesdays are just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays are pretty bad. Everybody thinks Mondays are so terrible, but it's like Tuesdays. <laughs> Check me out, man. I feel like Mondays, we, we can't really complain about. We just had Saturday, Sunday, but Tuesday, it's not the middle of the week. It's not the, like, it's not even close to the end and it's just the longest day. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so I guess what, what's kind of your your musical background then? Mm. It's funny. It, it started when I was like, I think I was like 11 years old with like poetry. And I really fell into like Tupac heavy. And I, when I was in this Tupac phase I and discovering how he kind of worked his poetry into these raps, it kind of slowly turned into these, these, things that would rhyme that would have this this steady rhythm that I could turn into like this you know rap of sorts mind you they were absolute trash <laughs> and then at uh, at 14 I decided to um kind of su su uh, what's the right term just throw everybody a curveball and instead of doing sports or anything like that I just took piano lessons which is weird because at 14 you're starting the game a little later than all the peers and people who have been doing it but also like do you want to play classical piano at 14? Like I did that for, uh, for four years while working on the rhymes and things kind of weirdly started to blend. And I remember graduating in 09 and, uh, there was a program starting up at U of L university of Lethbridge, digital audio arts. It was a four year bachelor degree in music. 
um, that gave you full access to this like two million dollar studio that they they built. So big shouts out to them. I ended up doing that program, and that was really where I got to meet a lot of like a lot of connections, a lot of friends, and um, the band that I work with now, as well as another hip hop group that I'm in, and one of the best producers I've ever known, Bloom. I met him there too. So it was that that was really where I made all the connections. And since then, since coming back and and working. I do finance in the middle of it, like for my day job. So uh, I like to do the Clark Kent Superman thing where I'll put on the glasses every so often. But at night I come home and I'm just in the studio working away, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, so do you do like, do you do all the production and stuff yourself or? I do. Uh, again, the listeners won't be able to see it, but you know, and neither were you because my camera is trash, but I'm in this uh, little studio that I built where I got the guitars on the walls, my piano's kind of just off to the side here and uh, got it treated and everything just so I could do, I guess, everything without having to push too many pieces off. A big piece of why I wanted to take that program was because I wanted to learn how to do something and not have to pay somebody to do it. Yeah. If, you can, if you can if you can produce your own things or your own material and not have to incur that expense, it'll go a lot further and a lot longer. Yeah. And here we are, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree with that. It's uh, I love I love bands who do it DIY. I love producers who do it DIY. Like I do all my stuff DIY. It's like I I like to be able to put on as many hats as I possibly can. You know. Absolutely. Abs- you're talking to the guy who just talked about the singer songwriter hip hop alternative folk sound or whatever he's trying to go on. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Definitely feel like you, you have to be able to do it. And especially in 2020, where so many resources that I think a lot of artists would have in person no longer exist. If, if, if you struggle with being able to do it at home, it's going to put up a lot more blocks than it would if you had the opportunity to do it yourself, right? Yeah. No, I, d- I agree. And I think a lot of people, a, a lot of bands and uh, producers especially, are kind of like uh, heading in that direction, you know? They're trying to do it all themselves. They're doing the recording themselves and all that kind of stuff because, you know, just as a necessity because, yeah, like you said, 2020 has kind of forced us into that corner, I guess. Which was kind of cool because I feel like also like the indie music scene was, or musicians were really going independent, Right, we moving away from the the major labels and the, what the idea of success might be. That the the industry really started shifting even before COVID, so that when COVID hit, and now we have these DIY musicians, you can still get people to tap into that creative side and produce like the best parts of them. Right? Yeah. No, I definitely, so, yeah. I definitely agree that uh, the 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 music industry was already experiencing that like independent musician rise and it it, it's such a cool thing to see that i've talked to so many bands who just they do it all themselves and they're still getting like that professional sound that like if you put it next to like a professionally produced uh song you wouldn't be able to tell the difference absolutely absolutely and and especially just with with the amount of uh, plugins you can use or the different audio or audio workstations like the the options are so limitless now that i really feel blessed to be a musician in this time for sure yeah no the 90s would have been trash yeah <laughs> <laughs> and hey that's probably why uh not a lot of good music came out of the 90s like there's some gems for sure but <laughs> some bare naked ladies fans are going to be coming for you, man. You just said some stuff. You know? <laughs> That's cool. They're probably already coming for me. I don't, I, I, I don't really, <laughs> those fans are rabid too, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. yeah. Uh, so I guess just, uh, purely for my own interest, I guess like what kind of setup are you working with? What kind of programs are you using and plugins and stuff like that? So I was like a pro, to, pun intended, I was an avid Pro Tools fan. Uh, but after their latest update where it's like subscription based now, uh, I, I was like, is this the opportunity for me to switch over? So last year I down, I, I bought Ableton and a lot of the producers I work with are, are working in Ableton and the like flexibility to be able to ship things back and forth is like unparalleled. Um, and then my setup, like I got, I got the SM7B, uh, I might have messed the the acronym up on that one, but you got the sure mic SM7B, yeah, uh, a machine um, like the drum pad from Native Instruments, and I got the Native Complete 61. 
um, a beautiful baby bottle mic that I use for some crispy recording when I need to, but my interface is the focus, right? Okay. Love it, man. Keep it simple, man. Yeah, yeah. The ones that make it complicated never get congratulated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually, I, I work with uh, some very similar gear. I actually got the focus right down there, and I also record in Ableton, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm always curious, because, like, I, I find, like, each, uh, each DAW is, like, its own unique instrument almost, you know? It takes its own, it has its own, like, uh, way of learning it and like mm. workflow and all that. And it's so interesting to just kind of hear uh, the different things that people use. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And shifting between them is almost like a different language sometimes. Yeah. I, I pulled up Ableton that first week after and I was like, well, I guess I'm not making music ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that. <laughs> Ableton's a tough one. It's just like it a bunch is, of man. yeah. It's just like a bunch of like uh, you open it up. You're like, what do I even do here? How is this even related to music? Because it, it can do it all. It can do everything that like people would normally go to Pro Tools for. I I find for like recording, but you can make a beat in Ableton as as easily as you could record. Yeah. So it's it's just a weird and it's so wild to think like 15 years ago that this wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. Um, like the technology are, are the things that technology have allowed us to do in terms of music and home production is just unreal. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I say, man, I just, I love the fact I'm a musician now versus any other time. Yeah. Well, it's the same here. Like this, this show wouldn't exist if the internet didn't exist. If, you know, if it wasn't cheap to get a home interface and mics and stuff like that, you know? So, Yeah. Yeah, and which, like, it's just, it's weird the way the universe sets things up because the way technology went now allows us in an idea, in a situation where we can't really be outside, we're all quarantining, to still have con meaningful connections, to still be able to jump on somebody's podcast. They've been running for four years strong, just breaking 100 episodes again. Congrats. Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And, you know, uh, I never feel like, uh, you know, I'm not the best at using technology as we like um, kind of discovered, I guess, a little bit trying to connect this <laughs> call. But uh, it's uh, it's it's insane that, yeah, just the, the things that it allows us to do. And uh, it's a crazy time to be alive for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering if you could just kind of take us through um, kind of like the evolution of your music a little bit. Like... Um, uh, I listened to one of your earlier albums. I think you released no. it in 2017. <laughs> um, Love, Lust, and Other Drugs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just like kind of, I listened to like kind of through your discography kind of from there. And mm. just like, I found it interesting. Uh, t there's a noticeable change for sure, you know? It's like there's a maturity that comes from the later songs that maybe wasn't necessarily there in the earlier songs. So I was just wondering... Maybe if you could take us kind of through that evolution of your music. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm so glad that you didn't bust out SoundCloud stuff. Like, just let's just leave SoundCloud on SoundCloud. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are some old things. But uh, 2017, I, I put out my first project, uh, Love, Lust, and Other Drugs. So um, I had recorded it while I was at U of L. Um, and it was, it was a, it was, it was a, beautiful kind of process that put us in the studio where on a couple of the songs I played this like wonderful grand piano um I had a producer that I worked with on a few of the songs Marcella Rada and she's just she is like a champ that really allowed me to like explore what would it look like if I sang on this part what would it look like if I uh turn this this acoustic guitar into an electric guitar and it was, it was a really cool explorative process at that point, but you're right. It was a very, I think it was again, self-indulgent, like most art would be, um, fast forward, uh, the next year and I'm working with a producer that I met. Oh, oh man. I think I just actually lied to you. Love, Lust, and other drugs might be 2016, 2017 was everybody still asleep. Okay. So everything I just said about that, that was 2016, <laughs> 20, <laughs> 2017, um, me and a producer that I had, I had met at U of L, Bloom, 
uh, were just clicked immediately. And it was like the coolest process because he would send me these beats, which are just intricate bodies of work. And I would fly back with vocals and lyrics and get them back to him in like probably less than an hour on a couple of those songs, stay woke, untitled. Um, we, it was just like a, a flow state where he sent it over. Boom. I sent this back. He sends another version. I add this and that was really cool. But then there's another song on there. I really love called we are the youth. And that song, we went into the studio and busted our heads for probably like three or four sessions, just trying to come up with lyrics that would work. What's the right tone for this? And then when it clicked again, flow state. So that was, that was a really cool process. Um, and I guess while I was doing EPs, those, those two were both five song EPs. I really enjoy the idea of shorter bodies of work more frequently. So with those ideas, Love, Lust, and Other Drugs, it's really cohesive. If you listen to it start to finish, it tells a story of, of lovers who are, you know, battling their internal demons that are eventually pulled away in, in some way or another. And it's a very dark project. Transition to love, uh, to everybody's still asleep. And now it's this process of kind of like waking up and it's, you know, discovering the world around you. Where do I fit into this? And it's this really existential question of how do I operate? Where do I exist? Um, relative to everything going on around me. So that was like such a, I, I get really deep with my concepts sometimes. <laughs> Um, but that, that process was really awesome and eye opening. I was actually nominated for a YYC music award, um, for stay woke, which was so awesome to be in the rap, uh, hip hop category in, in such a vibrant city. And after that, Bloom and I really like, just because of that flow state, we were just like, Hey, 2018, maybe let's put out, write and record, release a single every month for this year. Now that kind of lighten that fire under my ass, man. <laughs> There's something about this, uh, about deadlines that can trigger you, but also kind of, you know, set you straight and being able to connect with such a talented person and write all these like wonderful songs where we can like really connect and also work off of each other opened up so many doors. And it taught me a lot about the music I was making. And after that, I, I really tried to focus 2019 on outside of Pat Clifton and Bloom, what does Pat Clifton sound like? And where do I fit in in the whole journey of, of everything? So I kind of stepped back, put out, I think, one song or nothing, nothing too wild, um, and then kind of brought it back around full circle in 2020. And then, not to mention, I, I'm also part of another group, Odd fellas. Uh, we, we met in Lethbridge, me and Mike check, and we just got this hip hop vibe that we rolled together so well. And I'm super proud of that project. We got a lot of stuff coming there too. So just while all these different parts are moving, constantly thinking about where, what's, what's next, how's this going to work? And what do we bring it after that? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, it's, uh, you said a lot of like very kind of interesting things there about, uh, you know, deadlines and how deadlines can also be like, they're a good thing, but they can also be like a bad thing, you know? Mm. Um, it's something that personally I have experienced, you know, I like set my own personal deadlines and sometimes you need that push and it, it's kind of like you have to walk a balance, right? It's like, yes, have that deadline in mind and be like, I'm going to try my hardest to get it done for that time, but also like be forgiving and kind to yourself, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that a another thing that that process taught me was compassion, whether for myself or the people I'm working with, because we're all humans, we'll make changes, mistakes, experiment and miss deadlines. The most important thing I think for, for people who are creative in a, in a way is like, don't, don't be so hard on you, on yourself. If you don't make a deadline, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> you'll be okay you know <laughs> it can feel like it's the end of the world sometimes oh, but it's definitely not <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i i'll never forget this is again how like i guess naively arrogant i was the day love lust and other drugs comes out it's it is 2016 and i've been planning it forever and all of a sudden 
Kanye West Life of Pablo gets pushed back and then pushed back and then drops randomly on this day. And here I was, I was like, no, nobody's going to listen to my stuff because Kanye West dropped on the same day. And it was just this, it's, it's really naively arrogant, but I love to remember it because it was just this, this idea in my head that like I'd be somehow affected by these things. Lo and behold, here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I think like as early early musicians or mu- early artists, we all think that it's kind of like uh, make or break, live or, live or die, you know? It's like, it's all or nothing, you know? And oh, I yeah. think as you evolve as an artist and you grow older and I guess more mature, um, you realize that all you can do and all you can control is yourself So, like, do your best and uh, hopefully just put in the work and then hopefully people will find your stuff, you know? I think at some point or another, yeah, that's that's the wall you hit. A hundred percent where it's like, you know what? I'm actually just going to make what I think is the most me and it will end up where it's supposed to end up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where I think, again, that flow state comes back to. Anytime I had worked with Bloom, it was just like this natural process trust that process with yourself. We're all so, so worried about what the next person is worried about or what even like our, what we're worried about that it stops us from doing. And I'm, I'm definitely like, I'm, I'm, (laughs) I'm guilty of this too in my own ways is, is we have to just be able to be okay, slowing down or, or pushing ourselves out of the, the position we might be in, you know? Mm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And it's like, like I said, it's just like, you know, there, there, there's a reason you're doing the things you do, right? And the, 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 the answer for that is, it should be at least, is because you love to do it, you know? Hmm. So you should be doing it for yourself, and then, like, hopefully the other people also can see that, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think don't I, the the thing that always resonated about my favorite artists is they were unequivocally themselves. Yeah. Hardest thing to do, though, I feel like in in today's day and age, just you know, can I? Cur- I don't know if we can cuss on the podcast. Oh, yeah. oh I'll, I I'm constantly asking myself, who the fuck am I? Like, you know, like where do I actually exist in the world? And that's where some of my best work has has really come from. Um, but it's so important to make sure that. It doesn't actually, you, you realize it doesn't matter who the fuck you are. As long as you just are, you exist, you are here, make the most of it, man. Yeah, no, definitely agree with that. And, uh, you know, again, early on, it might be hard not to emulate some of the people you look up to oh, for sure. um, because you don't know exactly who you are as a creative person and you don't know how to be you as a creative person yet, but you learn that that's something that you learn the more you do it. I find. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just really want to make sure that I don't come across too, because I, I'm still learning who I am every single day, you know, finding a way to blend the hip hop into this singer songwriter is like my ultimate challenge. And I, I just now feel like I'm starting to hit a stride where it's like, okay, I can take a melody into this part or I can uh, put piano on that and still absolutely slay it as far as the rap goes, you know, like I, finding ways to make that a cohesive sound is still something I battle every day. So I, I, yeah, if anybody's listening, allow yourself to fail, learn and, and try again, just pick it back up. Don't, don't put it down. Yeah, no, totally agree. Never quit. Uh, the failures are lessons. You'll get better. Like I, I heard something once that was just like made it, it was fail forward. Yeah fail for like honestly like like go play the show where you bomb and you forget the lyrics which i've done countless times and remind yourself in that moment you're a human that these people are humans and they're they're everywhere when i get off stage you can shake my hand and you can we can have a full-on conversation i'll buy you a beer you know yeah yeah (laughs) no totally and i i i think that people are actually even maybe a little bit more attracted to those moments, you know, when they do see somebody who is themselves and a real person on stage when they screw up or they make that mistake or, but I think that that's kind of like why we go to live shows, right? Because it's that connection with an actual person 
now instead of just the music and the cds or whatever now this person has become tangible and real and you learn that they are like just a person too what a humbling experience when you see that person you've idolized as a person yeah holy shit their banter is hilarious they actually have a personality outside of you know these these 50 minutes when i put their cd in yeah yeah absolutely man And it's something like even doing this podcast, like when I first started doing this podcast, it was like, I got so nervous before each one because it was like, I'm having these bands over. They're obviously way cooler than me because they're in a band and stuff and they make music and they're just going to be like so above me. And then you just like gradually learn that, you know, everybody is just a person trying to be the best person that they can be. And they all have their things and their, their, their quirks and whatever. And it's just like, it was so... It was such a big thing for me to just like have that realization and be like, oh, okay, like we're all just people just trying to do our best, you know? Amen, man. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's honestly like I, I've I've always struggled with what should my stage name be? Like what what's gonna what you know, what presence is that? And I remember being like I said Love Lust and Other Drugs was coming out on February 14th, 2016. I didn't care who heard it, whenever. And then like January 27th, I'm still a song down. I was like, all right, well, crunch time. What name is this going under? And I came to this conclusion that like, when it comes to Pat Clifton, when it comes to me, like I just want to be the same person on stage as I am off. If if I see you on the street we can have a conversation if i come off stage we can and while i'm on stage i'm gonna fuck up i'm gonna have you know things to say and and it's it's just this constant like i want to be me idea but i ultimately i think that's what everybody wants is just to be themselves yeah yeah i i definitely agree with that and i think that's what people want to see too you know is they want to just they just want to see people being the, their authentic selves they don't want to see people trying to be something they're not or trying to emulate somebody that they're not they just really or at least that's what i'm attracted to is when people are being themselves i i think it's it's validating for a, a lot of people to see somebody they're like oh my god this person's just a person you know, I don't have to worry as much. I see that my, my favorite person, I'll never be able to see Prince in real life, but like, I just imagine that him on this pedestal, but I know in my heart, he was just a guy, you know? So I, I think that, but what's so ironic about that is how difficult it is to feel like we can be ourselves. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And, um, it's kind of funny going back to like touching on the technology topic a little bit, but with like social media and stuff too, um, we were given the opportunities to show the world who we really are on multiple platforms. But I think it's probably one of the hardest times to even be who you really are, you know? Oh, absolutely. If you show any sort of vulnerability, we all, we all think we're going to get jumped on in some way, or it's going to come back to haunt us and, you know, God forbid there's actual people that will get into your comments and like actually try and rip you apart. Like it's, it's, a, it's childish Gambino said something that just hits so hard. He's like, we're the most connected we connected we've ever been, but I've never felt more disconnected. Yeah. But again, man, like social media is like, it, it's perception is everything. And for myself, like I just started this new thing on social media where I get up every day, doesn't matter how I feel. And I tell whoever it is, Hey, have a good, have a great fucking day. Um, and I, if I can be honest, I started it for me, man. I was, I was, I felt like it's been 29 years of waking up and not knowing if I feel good. And just to look at yourself in a 10 second video and say, Hey, I hope you have a great fucking day doing that every day change the way that I see certain things and change the way that I look at social media because there's other people who tell me how impactful it is that somebody just told them to have a good day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, I I think that it's super cool that you are doing that. And it's actually one of the, one of the things that even kind of made me want to reach out to you to do this podcast (laughs) um, is that you are doing that on social media. I think it's super cool that you're using that tool and just putting like positivity out into the world. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and I've used, I'm not, I'm again, not, uh, I I am guilty of it using it as not a platform of positivity and even in some ways or another shaming myself because I'm not where I should be and having people say, why aren't you posting at this time or posting more content? And it, it, 
all that noise becomes super heavy. And I just remember waking up that day to realize like, you know what, I'm actually going to just not participate in the negativity, just bring positivity as much as I can and, and see where it goes. So I appreciate that you found that. And thank you. For, thank you for saying that. I, 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 it gives it some sort of tangible validation. I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. I, I would just like to say that I too have an unhealthy obsession with kittens. So <laughs> see, there you go. I'm super, super disappointed. Neither of them have come to show me love. Usually I got at least one on my lap and I'm just being slowly phased out, I guess, you know, yeah, hey, they're, they're, they're probably starting to bond with each other, you know, like they are. they're pushing, they don't even need me. I'm just the guy that feeds them, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I, I do know what you're saying though about the uh, like social media it can be such a force for good but it can also be such a force for like negativity and evil and like mm -hmm. um, it's another thing that just kind of like you know like you were saying it's like why don't I have this many followers or why why didn't that post go off like I thought it was going to why didn't I get likes on this or whatever and it's like it can be really hard to 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 block that out and just like use social media for the tool that it was designed for you know Yes. Yes. It's funny because that's such, such a, a thing of white noise almost, you know, these vanity metrics. What are my followers? How many, how many likes did I get? Because trust me, I, I post that I get five likes and I'm like, what the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> I still have those feelings, but ultimately at the end of the day, I remember posting, posting my, one of the first, like, have a great fucking day. Uh, posts and just thinking oh my god this is so corny like it's just <laughs> this is i'm i'm that guy right now and then i, I called my mom and I, I told her about it big shouts out to moms and she was just like yeah just be be that fucking guy and i was like all right well <laughs> I, I guess i guess so you know but yeah. those those things it's it's so easy to look at somebody else's life see a couple snapshots and think that it's better than your own um that's not going to be a piece I think that goes away until we just individually realize how important we are and how important it is that we just, we love our life. Call, call the person that you love, call the person that you know loves you. Um, and just, if you need help, ask for help. I think that's important and do, do the, do the fucking best you can. Yeah, no, definitely. And realize that like, it's always going to be a battle. It's never going to, it's always going to be a battle. It's, yeah. you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days, but it's always going to be a struggle to like maintain that good state of mind. A absolutely. A if I told you that I woke up every day, I did one of those things and had a great fucking day. I'd be lying, man. Yeah. <laughs> Some days suck. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even, you know, thinking about the music, like I, I, I used to get so worried. Like I, on Spotify, if you have less than a thousand plays, it will show in your top five songs, you have less than a thousand plays on these songs. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, I, I feel like I'm so, so much better than that. And where are my song plays at? And ultimately it doesn't matter. I remember being in, at less than a thousand plays um, before Buried Alive, one of my songs got really, got a lot of traction. I think we just hit about like 22,000, which is, I, I love that milestone. Um, but before that, I have a really good friend uh, who had mentioned how important it was that somebody writes this kind of perspective that just talks about how hard it is or how overwhelming it can all feel. And to know that like that person connected with it, that it made a difference or it was impactful for them. What else, what else do you want as a musician? You know, like I don't need the 20,000 plays. If, if somebody heard that and it saved them or just made them feel less alone, then I've already won and I'm more successful than I could have ever dreamed. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's, uh, I agree with that. Um, I feel like when you're doing something like this, something music or podcast, whatever art it is, but like, I feel like something that you gradually begin to realize is that it is all about making those connections you know yeah it, it's about connecting with people on like a real level and um just like one of the one of my favorite things to hear um is that when people are like you know what i discovered this really cool band because of your podcast you know mm -hmm. like it's 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 <laughs> the same thing for me you know it's just like oh it's like 
awesome because that's like why I do this. I want to showcase these bands. I want people to know about them because I really dig them and I really dig who they are as people. So I want people to, I want this to be a platform for that. And when people tell me that, it's just like, it doesn't matter how many people are listening that one person found this band because of this show so it's like that's that makes it all worth it you know absolutely man and you know as somebody who's on the podcast thank you so much again i am so appreciative that that's that's the way that you see it because it helps people like myself just get out there more and and again connect with the right people i do truly believe things will end up where they should be and me being on here could have ripple effects for somebody if they find the music or if they come to your podcast and discover something that really resonates with them it's just fuck yeah more positivity man fuck it It, like i i it blows my mind because i feel like it's this real surreal moment all my music again 2016 2017 was real dark and then just to try my best to choose the light or this light-hearted feel of it, 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 it's it sounds a lot harder than it it feels a lot harder than it than it usually is just try your best yeah yeah no totally and i like what you said there to choose the light you know because at the end of the day it is it, no matter how hard that choice may be it is always a choice absolutely absolutely barring any sort of exigent cir- circumstances a- absolutely it is it, it's and again not to make it sound easy it's not every fucking day will be a battle, but you do get the opportunity every day to try again. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, do you ever do you ever feel like um, like a responsibility, or because you do have this platform to like, uh, I guess, kind of put a message out there or messages out there through your art, or yeah. Oh yeah, I've I've gotten in like a bunch of deep fights with a lot of people <laughs> about whether or not an artist has a responsibility to to use their platform for good. And I am always on the side of yeah, absolutely. My my mission as an artist is to save somebody's life. If somebody hears something that I make that makes them feel less alone or validates their vulnerability enough that they they reach out to somebody or they take the step to pursue their passion, then again, I've, I've already won. I'm that's, that's what I want to do. That's my mission every time. So when I make something, I try to think about that person and I try to think about if it's going to be received that way while also trying to learn how to like, let it go and just share where I'm at and what I've done, like what I've, what I've thought. One of my favorite songs I've ever written was uh, off of Everybody's Still Asleep. It's called In Good Time. And it talks about, it's, it's 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 a very introspective song that really talks about the, honestly, at the, at the end of the second verse, somebody commits suicide. And I have one of my closest friends in the world speak on this last section of it where really it just covers exactly what what i'm trying to do but also how just we all feel so who am i to try and sugarcoat the world to somebody you know i i I think that don't get me wrong i love my playful tracks and i will you know i'm sure that i'll i'll put out music that doesn't necessarily uh, reflect these views. Cause I don't, I don't want to be in a box. I'll make whatever I feel like I, I want to make, but there's a line I love from J Cole where he says the singles, only the look to get you to buy the book. I just pray to God that one day you read into it. And I love that because every body of work I try to make some sort of piece of realism and just something somebody can, can connect with. Otherwise, why the fuck are we doing it? You know, like, <laughs> if it's just about the money, then I mean, do, might as well go down to Wall Street or just do whatever you like. Yeah, just never really got the validation from the money part. Don't get me wrong; I'd love to be rich. Who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my soul is rich. Let me say that I, I feel like I have a very, very rich soul from a lot of people that have shared how much my music has impacted them. And one friend in particular, I won't put her on blast. Just, just. Um, has really has really helped bring that around and that perspective kind of just to light. So big shouts. Hopefully she knows who she is. 
Nice. And it's, I think, again, you kind of hit the nail on the head with that one. It's like, I, I feel like, especially as an artist who is putting their work out there, they do it because they have something to say, you know, or that they want to convey a message or an opinion or something, or they just want to make somebody smile or whatever it is. But I feel like if you're making art and you're making it public, then there there should be a message behind it. Even if that message simply is, I, I hope that you have a great fucking day, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to just be clear, like I'm never ragging on the feel good tracks. Like if, if it's out there and that's its purpose, then let it serve that. But, but you're absolutely right. Like if, if that's just what the message is, then at least it has a message. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, again, it go, kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, but it, it, it kind of, as long as you make it with like that authenticity and like that, that, that kind of like true nature, it, it'll be what it is and you should let it be what it is. And just, yeah. 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 And just, just, just try. It goes back to, it circles all the way back. Just, just don't, don't put it down, pick it back up. You're not as bad as you think you are just keep fucking going yeah and the the thing is is that the more you do it the better you get and like Mm -hmm. i i I know it sounds obvious but i feel like a lot of people don't realize that like yeah you're gonna suck at first but like if you keep doing it and you keep on going you get better (laughs) yes 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 (laughs) like cliches wouldn't be cliches if there wasn't a reason for them to be you know what i mean they are because they're just they're universal truths in a sense man practice makes perfect yeah exactly cliches are cliche for a reason (laughs) wild (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so i'm gonna i i guess uh i'm just gonna like fanboy out a little bit here um so the the, when i became first aware of you it was actually at a big event but it was a big summer school oh yeah (laughs) yeah where you uh where you played with adequate Oh my guys. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I still, like you still post clips of it every once in a while, but I had a moment like listening to you and adequate. Um, I think you were, uh, I know the song by finally moving. I don't know if it's the actual name of the song, but you did a cover of it and like you were rapping over top of it. And it was just like, it was like the stars aligned. And I was like, this is some of the coolest shit that I'm hearing right now. Like, (laughs) (laughs) yes. Well, and and if I'm not mistaken, that might've been the same tune that we, we worked in with all along the watchtower. Yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) yeah. So what was really cool is like, we've got this Etta James sample plus the band going hard. And then we, I just looked at the boys and, and they're this, this like, awesome awesome band out of lethbridge um that that are so cohesive and they just are all on the same page big shouts to adequate please check out adequate funk they are the boys um i just remember looking at him and i I looked at josh the guitarist and he we knew and he just ripped into all along the watchtower and he's got the guitar solo nailed keenan on the drums scott on the bass it's just such a Oh man, I miss that feeling. But <laughs> oh god, I, I'm sure I I miss that feeling just being in the crowd. Like oh man, <laughs> I, I I looked at my girlfriend. I was just like, this is literally blowing my mind right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. I uh, I I hope to blow your mind once again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just had to get that like fanboy out of the way. But <laughs> I told you though, I was like, I know, I know you from somewhere, man. I know we've met. I swear we have at least once or twice. Yeah, pro- uh, possibly. Possibly. We've probably been at very uh, similar events, at least. So Absolutely. And you know what? With COVID in 2020, I feel like everybody gets a reset. If you don't remember where you know somebody from, all the dimensions just slammed together. We just had a 10-year period slammed into one year. It's okay. Just just show some love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I guess my only question about that performance is, was that... Uh, did you guys pre-plan that out at all? Or is it just something that kind of... Well... I've been playing with the Adequate guys since, oh my God, um, that band I mentioned, or the group I'm a part of, Oddfellas, <clears throat> excuse me, Oddfellas, we, I, I met those guys through Mike, who's the other half of Oddfellas, and we've been playing together probably since 2015, give or take, okay. maybe 2016. And so when 
I got asked to do uh, summer school. I really wanted to do something that was different than just rapping over some instrumentals. And I was, uh, I asked the boys if they'd want to join and uh, they were able to connect with big, big shouts out to big, by the way, love those guys, love that whole crew. Um, and, and it just kind of came together. So I think we had one rehearsal before that where I went down to Lethbridge and I was just like, Hey, here's the set. We set it up. We played it a good few times. Um, and then we didn't get to actually practice again until well, like we didn't practice again after that. So it was a really organic, let's feel this out kind of thing. And it just worked out so naturally that I, I couldn't ask for a better time. Like, I think we were nervous at one time that it was going to start raining. And then for like the 45 minutes of our set, it was just clear. And I remember jumping down. And uh, I think at one point I was doing the jump on it dance. Cause they played a little, they played a set before me and I was just, yeah. I was, I was grooving, man. So <laughs> it was planned out, uh, just in the sense that we, I guess we, we rehearsed it once, maybe a couple times, but other than that, we just, we flow and they're such a group, such a good group that, uh, I really couldn't ask for better bandmates, man, for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, that was the highlight of that show for sure. But like, man, that was, I still think about it to this day sometimes. Like it's just, it pops <laughs> into my head. It's. Well, thank you, man. I think I'll I'll try to find some clips. I'll post them just for you. I got you. I'm gonna tag you in every single one. Yeah, pl please do, cause like, oh, it was it was so cool. <laughs> thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, um, I you've been talking a lot about kind of like flow state and flow and stuff like that. So uh, I wouldn't I was just wondering if maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Like, how do you? foster the flow state is there anything that you do that reliably gets you into the flow state uh yeah, stuff like that <laughs> yeah yeah i guess the process is really it's ne i've never really refined my process which is i guess probably why some of the people that i work with get frustrated by how long it can take but uh sometimes things hit and you just know what it's supposed to be or you know what it could be so you kind of go down this explorative explorative kind of road and you you end up where you are um i guess in my best moments what it looks like for me is i'll start on the piano maybe on the guitar and i'll have these rough lyrics that i'll kind of just decide how does this how does this want to play out where should it kind of end up going start out maybe with a melody or two and eventually take that into whatever system i'm using like ableton I just actually wrote this song the other day um, that I'd, I'd had these chords for like four years and they're just super basic. And I decided to play it out and it turned into this whole, this whole production, this whole kind of piece. And, and speaking of flow state, I, I want to say that's probably the, the only time I felt it as me. I've felt it with groups. I've felt it with other people, but for myself, I've been searching for that sound and all it took was actually taking the next step was taking those guitar chords that I had and putting them into Ableton to say, all right, I'm just going to do it. And it turned into something bigger. I'm really proud of that song. It'll be coming out mm, hopefully mid mid year. I'm trying to think of a couple things I got on the go, but I like to keep people guessing again, Scorpio, you know what I mean? Can't give them all at once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's tough, man. Just to circle back, like as far as the process, it doesn't matter if it starts with lyrics, doesn't matter if it starts with a uh, chord progression. I just try to do, and I try to just get an idea out. And if it doesn't go anywhere, so be it. Try again tomorrow. Yeah. 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 I think that's a, a really good message to put out there too, is, you know, finish your ideas, even though maybe not all of them are going to be winners, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fit, yes. Even if you know that they suck, <laughs> see them through. And that is the other half of, of doing is really just like allowing yourself to be like, oh, I don't feel good about this. Oh, I got to push through. Okay. Oh, this isn't so bad. That's a natural part of my process is always hating what I've made for like at least 35 minutes. 37 on a bad day <laughs> and, then, and then coming back to it and being like, you know what? I'm just, I'm exploring. I'm doing what I do best. I'm trying something out. Mm, yeah. And, and it, it is kind of amazing too, that, you know, you can have the same song, you can have the same melodies, but you can hear it like a million different ways, you know? Oh, for sure. What's, what's super cool is I, I, I just sent a, a beat over to a friend of mine who I'm also in another group with, Alt Hotel Pla Panic. We'll, we'll, 
we'll get there <laughs> later. But I sent her something and I was like, I feel like this should just be an instrumental and I'm pretty sure I'm going to put it out like that. But she sent some back something so, so beautiful that I can't not record. Eventually it will come out. Even if it, even if this is just an instrumental and it tells its own story, there will be a version of this that has vocals on it. And that's another thing I feel like I'm realizing. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> With the fact we can put songs on these major platforms and my song can come up behind somebody that I idolize or be placed on a playlist is something that 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, we didn't have the opportunity to do. Just do. And if it sucks, it sucks, but you will continue and you will continue to get better. Yeah. Yeah. It's like circles back to what we were talking about before, right? <laughs> there it is, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so, so do you feel that like you have maybe a little bit more freedom um, now that you've kind of, uh, you've kind of developed your sound, you kind of know who you are a little bit more and you are, you know, you are Pat Clifton, but you are also a part of all these other bands and projects and stuff like that. So do you feel like just kind of being and establishing yourself kind of as, uh, a solo musician has opened up the door to allow you to perform with all these other people in a more cohesive way? Oh, that was a wicked question, by the way. <laughs> that, was, that was a dope question. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I think that the the things that I've learned from the other people I've worked with, whether writing, whether being on stage with a band, being on stage with Mike, Mike in a band, or just me and Bloom, the things I've learned as far as who Pat Clifton is, I, I'm eternally grateful for. But also the the discovery of what my music will sound like as I move through all these different projects, I, I'll, I couldn't have asked for a better situation to explore that. So as I kind of transition now into, you know, looking forward to, you know, as Pat Clifton as solo act, I have all these wonderful experiences with with these other bands that have taught me so much and that I hope in some ways or another I've taught and maybe been on stage and validated, hey, like, you know, let's, let's, I'll never forget being on stage with Mike and having, I love the lyrics I have for one of our songs in Oddfellas and I bombed the lyrics, but like hard too. I just, I stopped talking. I looked over at Buddy and it just like, we looked at each other and luckily Josh, the guitarist from Adequate just picked up and started rocking a solo. Next thing you know, the band's jumping on it. They fill the spot. Nobody knew. That moment was so validating. I'll never forget just to say, oh my God, I've, I've, I've learned to kind of let go of that expectation I have of myself to be perfect. And I take that in every song I make now. Just just do and try to try to do what you can. You'll fuck up, but that's okay. So Yeah. Yeah, I've learned a lot. I hope I've taught a lot. And for whatever I, whatever that's worth. Sometimes I I feel like I don't know if I'm answering the question. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the problem. If you give a creative too much room to talk, we'll just fucking chew your ear off, man. <laughs> I, I and I I've said it before, but as a podcaster, I love that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could indulge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I I hope I've taught a lot. I know I've learned a lot, and I'm eternally grateful for the lessons that I know will still be difficult. That I'll I'll have the opportunity opportunity to learn in the future yeah for sure um i feel like now now more than ever uh music is like far more collaborative than it has ever been in the past um especially within like you know kind of the 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 hip-hop scene and like the 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 uh yeah like r&b and stuff like that but uh, I guess maybe could could you touch on that a little bit like what has your experiences been like um Oh yeah. With other artists and stuff like that. Yeah. I think hip hop in particular has been one of those genres that it's still, I mean, still relatively young in some respect um, because a lot of people have this mentality of needing to be uh, the best or better than someone else. And if you don't, then, you know, you're, you're a whack rapper or, you know, I have to do it myself because X, Y, and Z or these kind of false notions of, of whatever it might look like. But as, as we move forward and we've been through like the, uh, the craziest year that any of us have really ever lived through, it became really apparent, at least for me, how important it is to reach out to those people from the sake of my creativity. And in, in some regards, 
theirs too, because we're used to being in these environments on stage or in front of the, in front of people where we have to be these braggadocious, uh, these, these figures in some way or shape or form, but now that's kind of taken away or at least moved online. And, and how, what do you do when, when, when you're stripped of that kind of sense of, 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 of self and wonder, you kind of realize you're forced naturally to turn inside and say, okay, like, what do I want to be doing? What do I want to be saying? And the only way to get out of that sometimes is to share your thoughts with somebody else and see how their thoughts and your thoughts merge. So I'm grateful now because a lot of people are kind of opening up, whereas I think they were pretty closed off before. Um, and, and as far as hip hop, like working with, uh, several producers or even forcing myself to produce a little bit more has been this, this learning experience and it, it teaches you a lot. So I, I hope a lot of people take those words and kind of decide to maybe reach out to somebody and collaborate. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but you'll have the experience and the knowledge. But now in particular with COVID, like we, at least the community that I'm a part of, we found ways to connect with each other or connect each other to other people, which I, which I think is really important. So I hope we continue that if, and if, and when things shift back to some sort of a, a normal state, I hope that we're able to take this sense of community and this sense of kind of feeling forward as well too, because prior to this, it was pretty tough to get anybody to collaborate, especially in rap. Everybody wants to be that, that next guy in Calgary. We haven't had rappers blow up like Vancouver and Toronto, but our scene here is bubbling. Mm -hmm. Everybody prior to this, I, I found just really wanted to be that guy. Whereas I think for myself, at least the best piece, the best, best thing that has helped me thus far is realizing that I might just be a, a piece in that story, but it will be my piece. I'll have this section of it that, 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 is mine and that's okay. Like it doesn't have to be this, this grand thing. And I don't need to be the front guy. I like having my hands in a bunch of different stuff. Sometimes I like to just go to shows and play the back and not talk to anybody. So I hope that we continue to collaborate, but I really want to dispel and that, that, that disbelief that you have to do it by yourself and you have to be that guy. Cause the most important thing or girl, let me just say, or woman, like it doesn't matter what you're doing. Just be the best version of you that you really can be. Just yeah. do. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep bringing it back there, man. I know I've said that like 12 times, but I'm just going to, I'm going to drill it into, into everybody in the message. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool though, because I think because of that mentality and that like kind of collaborative mentality that has come with technology and just like today, the way we communicate today is it's the reason why, you know, when somebody asks you like, what kind of music do you make? It's so hard to give an answer because the genres are blending together, you know? it's it's never oh, yeah. been more fuzzy on what genre you you're producing i feel like you know <laughs> which like again is such a such a unique blessing when you look at it from the lens of like five years ago i thought i was just a hip-hop artist but here i am now the second song i had nominated for a yyc music award uh was an r&b and soul song and i know you guys had i know you had kate stevens on the show big shouts out to kate uh she won that year and i i could not feel more proud to be nominated against such a talented musician so i hope one day that we are able to work together kate if you're listening big shouts out to you i would love to make a song um but really that like, like we we are it's, we have this opportunity to rebuild what has been the norm make the world make it whatever you want it to be if you want to work with people work with people if you're better just working your ass off do that too but like just do it man yeah but technology love it the way i can ship you a session after this and i get, like we can just keep it moving we wouldn't have been able to do 30 years ago yeah, no, it's it's an exciting time for sure. And I, it feels like, especially with what has happened in the last year and stuff like that, it feels like, you know, we will be, we will be laying the groundwork for what the future 
has in store kind of like the future of music the future of podcasting the future of art in general will be is being laid right now by the people who are doing it and it's a it's an exciting and you can feel it even i feel like it's an exciting time to be alive (laughs) yeah well absolutely like it, it it's i think you just nailed it man absolutely like the the if you're doing it, you are laying the foundation for that next step, the next piece. And again, big shouts out to you. The fact you've been doing this for four years, you broke a hundred, a hundred episodes and you have allowed musicians to connect, to have this common place where we come to, to have these conversations and feel like we can just groove out. I, I just, it's, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm grateful for the the world that, and the the space we're in now, and just the fact that we have people like yourself who can allow us to just talk, man. Yeah. Hey. Hey, man. The the feeling's mutual. I'm glad that there's people like you out there making music that is fucking rad. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best, man. I do my best. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe if you can, if you could maybe just give us maybe. Uh, a little bit of what 2021 is going to look like for Pat Clifton. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I have a good few songs that I've again, been mulling over deciding, you know, how is it best to put these out? What medium would, would, would it work best with? Um, Would it fit best on this project as a standalone project? I'm, I'm fleshing it out right now, but there are, at least a couple projects between Odd Fellas, uh, between Alt Hotel Panic, between eventually, hopefully, getting on stage again with Adequate and just playing Pat Clifton songs, and even just sharing some of these these steps that I've taken over the last year and a half, two years of really self exploration uh, that I'm excited to share. I can't, in particular, say you know I got a single coming out next month. Although I may have a single coming out next month. <laughs> That's just a little, uh, little teaser, teaser trailer there. But I, I think I'm going to do my best to continue to wake up every day, tell everybody to have a great fucking day. Sometimes bring people in on the process as far as maybe doing some Instagram lives and just sharing the fact that I'm a flawed human with, with vulnerabilities and hopefully that encourages other people to be as vulnerable and pursue the things they want to do. I'm more interested in validating people's vulnerability this year than I am solely just putting out music. If, if my music does that, then I've, I've, I've done what I've always wanted to do and I've, and and I've helped somebody. And I love that. If that comes with just the great fucking mornings, great fucking days, then so be it. But I will find a way to intertwine the music in that. And I hope to be sharing a couple projects pretty soon. But ultimately, I'm just, I'm just doing, the, doing me to the fullest as much as I can, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I think, I think that it's, it's an important message to put out there. And I'm glad that there is somebody who is putting it out there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, is there any just kind of final things that you would maybe want to toss out there before we close this out or? Yes. Yes. I know that we've said it 65, 77 times. Um, if, if anybody's listening to this, just do your best fail forward. Uh, if it sucks, that means you're doing it right. If you hate it, that means you're doing it right. Just keep doing it. And I try to always make sure that I recognize that every day is a struggle and every day is a new day to attempt to to overcome that struggle. If you're struggling, please reach out to somebody, um, a friend, a loved one. Share your story. There will be people who can help. And um, I love you. I, I I hope you're doing okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me. This was awesome. Oh man, it's been my pleasure. Just like just being able to actually chat with another human is is so uh, surreal almost, you know. It's a weird thing to say, but and you're you're a cool dude, man. Thank you so much for hosting a platform where we can just have a real life conversation. Yeah, for sure. That's always been the goal for this podcast, so it means a lot that you said that. <laughs> Absolutely, my guy. I'm searching for some water for light. Who I should be, or what I should have become overnight. At 17, I used to fly my dreams. Now I can barely get to sleep. And even when I do, I can't ever see. 
It's evergreen, somewhat kinda used to the cold You never know it, even if it means I'm froze to the bone Like Stone Cold Steve Austin flossing Like I don't give a fuck, my gums bleed from these bars Cause I feel too much Battling two different sides, like I'm on Adderall Fast and haven't me eaten in a week A jittery bastard, but the doctors overlooked him And the teachers looked past him Maybe he chatted so much in classes Cause he never felt challenged to break molds Fighting to take hold should I work for 40 hours or should I take those? I don't know, indigo, but I know you used to glow So bright, young mind, indigo child Rather they slang dope, niggas just can't cope What do I gotta do to get my mind some hope? Well let it go, indigo, cause I know you used to glow So bright, young mind, indigo child Managed to make it out, fuck you complain about Contemplating every day of blowing my brains out Well let it go, indigo, cause you know you used to glow So bright, young mind, indigo child Could have sworn I saw my future as I looked through the past While I'm staring out through the rear view of a black tinted glass I'm out the back, looking Pat, think he's slick Writing raps, talking shit, for a minute Falling victim to the glitz, grown up to admit That growing up is a myth, I spent my youth Trying to prove that I wasn't a kid Ironically now, I'm trying to slow it down a little bit But the pedal to the metal, and my music loud as shit As I ride around the city, looking up at the stars I think I saw one in the distance, and it started to fall I closed my eyes, got a feeling in my bones Let it go, getting lost in the thought, painted in the go, go. If you like this episode of Groove Talk, why not leave a review? You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or pretty much anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Help us break through those evil algorithms and reach the most amount of glorious listeners that we possibly can. For up-to-date information on the show, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find us at Froggy Style Productions. For more ways to support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.